weekend. Um, we will uh, begin this morning's general session, September 8th, 2020, with Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by Commissioner Boyce. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, flag the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, as a reminder, uh, this is a public meeting is being recorded. Uh, we kindly ask that you maintain the same level of decorum as if we were meeting in person. Uh, finally, for those of you that are calling in, please ensure that you have muted your phone by pressing star six. Thank you, everyone. Um, we uh, need the approval of the minutes of the June 2nd, 2020 general session, the September 3rd, 2020 briefing session, and the August 31st, September 2nd, September 4th, 2020 administrative briefings. So move. All right, thank second. you. Moved to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Minutes have been approved. Thank you. Uh, and first to the engineer. Resolution number 604-20, Morrison Farms East Section 4, accepted for public maintenance and shall become part of the Jefferson Township Road System, Franklin County, Ohio. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good to see everyone, even if only in a virtual sense still. My name is Cornell Robertson. Franklin County engineer and Franklin County drainage engineer. Commissioners, this first resolution as stated is for a subdivision in the northeast part of the county in Jefferson Township. It is south of Havens Corners Road and east of Wagner Road. The subdivision is known as Morrison Farms East Section 4. The roadway, drainage, and water supply infrastructure has been built and the streets are ready to be turned over to the township, Jefferson Township, for maintenance. Pending any questions, I respectfully request for approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 604-20. I'll second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 604-20 has been adopted. Thank you. Now, now on to the drainage engineer. Resolution number 605-20. Resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the stormwater management program. Commissioners, this resolution transfers funds for the second half of 2020 for the stormwater management program. Pending any questions, I respectfully request your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 605-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 605-20 has been adopted. Thank you all very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Cornell. And to the public defender now. Good morning, Resolution commissioners. Go ahead. Resolution number 606-20. Resolution authorizing a one-year contract between the City of Columbus, the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, and the Franklin County Public Defender Commission in the amount of $304,223. Good morning, Commissioners. Christy Clarizio with the Public Defender's Office. This is for uh, to provide legal services in the indigent person to indigent persons in Franklin County Municipal Court. The total estimated cost of services in the Muni program for this year is $6,276,540. Estimated 56% of these cases in Muni Court this year will be state charge misdemeanors. This estimate is based on actuals from 2019. The cost of the county is estimated to be $3,514,862 before the state reimbursement. And after state reimbursement, the county obligation is estimated to be $1,054,458. 44% of the cases in the municipal court in 2020 will be city charges, a cost to the city in the amount of $2,761,678. It's estimated that after 70% state reimbursement and the 2019 reconciliation in the amount of $524,280, 
The city obligation this year for this contract is $304,223. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 606-20. Second. Moved and second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 606-20 <coughs> has been adopted. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Economic Development and Planning. Resolution number 607-20. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Russell Bowerman at 6621 London Groveport Road, Township of Pleasant, Ohio, 43123. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, the property owner took out a loan for $2,000.235 um, as a part of our housing loan program, which provides eligible first-time homeowners assistance with the down payment um, and closing costs for a home within Franklin County. The program also provides loans for urgent home repairs that um, threaten the health of the occupants. Um, this homeowner um, took out the loan for $2,235, and we are respectfully requesting that you sign the discharge of mortgage sheet. Okay, if there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 607-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 607-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 608-20. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to assign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Albertine L. Snyder at 2494 Rosedale Avenue, Township of Franklin of Ohio, 43223. Um, this homeowner took out a loan for $7,896.24 as a part of our home loan program. All the requirements for the program are fulfilled and they all property taxes are current. So we respectfully ask that you sign the discharge of mortgage. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 608-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 608-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 609-20. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to assign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Imogene Helton at 898 Exeter Road, Whitehall, Ohio, 43213. Um, this homeowner has got a loan for $4,000. Um, they have met all requirements of the loan program and all taxes are current for the property. Um, so we just ask that you sign the discharge of mortgage for this property. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 609-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 609-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 610-20. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the di attached discharge of mortgage instrument, Troy and Amber Thrash at 1447 Rose Hill Road, Township of True Row, Ohio, 43068. Um, this um, homeowner took out a loan for $6,000 and they've met all the requirements of the program as well as their property taxes being current. Um, so we just ask that you sign the discharge of mortgage sheet. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 610-20. Second. Move to second to voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 610-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 611-20. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Barry A. Cunningham at 5584 Harrisburg, Georgesville Road, Township of Pleasant, Ohio, 43123. This homeowner took out a loan for $6,800 with our home loan program. Um, they've met all the requirements of the program and the property tax is current. So we ask that you sign the discharge of mortgage form. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 611-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. 
Resolution number 611 20 has been adopted. Thank you, um, Madison. Uh, we I had to say family. good morning yeah, to my husband. Job okay. and family. <laughs> yeah, job and family services. <laughs> Resolution number 612-20, resolution authorizing supplemental appropriations for the addition of six full-time positions to support the Family Stabilization Unit pilot program. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've reached morning. a milestone in the Family Stabilization Unit pilot. Last week, our specialists began shadowing the juvenile um, court system. While this is a critical step before they can begin taking referrals and working directly with the young men and their families and youth, we already recognize we will need to add capacity for the pilot in order to recognize your vision. We are respectfully requesting $157,424 total in addition appropriations for personal services and French benefits to support six new family stabilization unit specialists. We already have a short list of internal candidates to fill these new positions and will be prepared to onboard them over the coming weeks. We appreciate the support of office management and budget in preparing this resolution. Pending any questions, I will ask for your approval. And commissioners, if I could just really quick um, let you know who is at the table on this partnership. As you know, we have all of our board of Com commissioner, um, human service agencies, aging, um, child support, we also have um, our, a few of our levy agencies, Children's Services, and um, Adam H. I am proud to say that Children's Hospital, we've met with 30 of their clinicians last week. Children's Hospital will be joining our table in this integrated conversation and availing their resources as well. Today, presenting the resolution with me, I have one of our family stabilization, family stabiliz stabil utilization specialists, Walter Dillard. Um, if he could say a few words, I would appreciate it. Yeah, it's a tongue twister. We know, we know. Um, good morning, commissioners. How's everybody doing today? Good morning. morning. Good, good. So um, first, what I wanted to do is just give a little um, update. Um, so commissioners, um, we started shadowing the juvenile court system on September 1st. Um, I would again like to remind everybody in the, in the community that in addition to actually assisting families navigate the involved human search human service agencies, we also monitor policies that appear to be a constant barrier for families to stabilize and move up the economic mobility ladder. Um, we've also, um, will collect data, um, track and assist us in measuring our effectiveness and our efforts. So that way we kind of have a barometer on to see what works, what doesn't work, what we need to adhere to and things like that. Um, lastly, um, I would just like to mention that under every social determinant of health indicator, you know, transportation, housing, education, employment, Black people always, we always come into lowest thriving. 73% um, of our black boys interface with Franklin County juvenile justice system and things of the likes. So um, the thing is these young men, they're not born bad or, or born delinquent. Many times, as I've stated before, you know, their zip code and the standard is their social determinants of health that have conditioned how they grow up and when and how they're gonna come into contact with that juvenile justice system. Um, so our job here is to assist these families by providing them high touch provider services to mitigate those interactions, right? And so, and then lastly, you know, again, I just want to thank the Board of Commissioners and your, your relentless and successful effort in helping deem racism as a public health crisis. It's because of you guys' efforts that all of this has even been possible. So on behalf of the entire Family Stabilization Unit, uh, we just want to say thank you. Director? Pending any questions, I should for your approval. Thank you, Walter. Outstanding, uh, once again, as always. If uh, there are no co comments or questions. This is so important. And I think the work among the agencies working together is just so critically important. Thank you, Walter. And thank you, Joy. Director, your work is <coughs> just standing and bringing together these members of your team working with all of the others in the community is just, it's a game changer. And you know how long we've been trying to do this and that you made it happen. 
And Walter, your work is is just outstanding. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of the um, data after a time of doing this work. Um, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just add to uh, thanks for that, Commissioner Brown. Um, I'll just add that you, you pointed out something really important, and that's once we have an opportunity to really evaluate the data, we can uh, take steps to strengthen the work. And uh, we know that we're we're just getting into it in this approach, and so there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of um, we're um, learning as we go in terms of the setup, our interaction with these families and within the system. Um, nonetheless, you know, I expect that a year from now, we will have the type of data where we can audible out into some different strategies that really allow us to drill down deep into some of these issues in a way that we haven't been able to do before. So um, the data point you made is, I think, crucial. And um, both Christopher and Walter, I think, are the right guys to lead the effort. And I'm excited about what um, what they're doing and giving them the right team and, and, and tools is, is crucial to that. We were really thoughtful about not wanting them to spend all day on paperwork, you know, all day, you know, at their desk. And it was really important that we, you know, um, I challenged the director to, um, you know, put them in position to be successful by asking us and pushing us for the resources you need and, and I think this is the direction that we're headed. And I'm, I'm really excited. I, I think the director has approached this, I think, in a very um, unique but aggressive way. And so I wanted to acknowledge Director Bivitz too for just um, how you're going at this. I really think that's the game changer uh, in terms of um, this is important, it's a priority. And um, uh, you know, she's got her best people uh, lined up behind this work and, and that's what is very hopeful and exciting about it. And, and more important, finally, more importantly, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited and hopeful for the families that are interacting with our system because this is a chance for them to be better, them to be stronger, them to keep their families whole and, and get the resources they need to be successful. And so um, uh, th this is a, a really good move, I think. And um, and I'm oh, sorry, lastly, you know, the, the stop laughing, Commissioner Grady. Uh, he loves it when I, he loves it when I do that, but, um, Let me, let me another and after this. no, no, this is, this is it. This is it. The, the only thing I'll say is that, you know, the, here, here's a situation where, um, now I forgot what I was going to say, but, but I'll just say, uh, this is good work. I'm excited about it. And, uh, um, I think we're heading in the right direction. Thanks everybody. Thank this you, Commissioner. Good. And just really quick, commissioners, just so you'll know, there will be a truancy team, a diversion team, and then we're going to stand up another team. Um, we're getting a lot of requests just from different um, organizations in the community. I know um, Columbus Police Department reached out last week to figure out how they can start sending referrals. But as you know, we're going to work with them. But this unit is about partnership because we want to be able to exchange best practices, data, information versus just being a referral source so that we can really high touch handhold our families. Um, I would just ask that you continue to be patient with us as we stand up all these different teams who will be dispatched throughout different systems, but most importantly in the community to assist our families. Excuse me, this is the, um, <clears throat> this is what makes uh, Franklin County different. This is what separates us uh, and our organization from <clears throat> counties across the state, counties across the country. We are not just um, a, a County government, JFS isn't just a county agency that, that pushes paper and pushes people through the system. You know, this is this is what differentiates uh, who we are and who our people are, uh, and who our agencies are from our colleagues uh, in other counties. Uh, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're really, you know, doing work here that, that separates us from, from other folks because we're, uh, we are, reaching into the community, reaching into families, uh, and, and really putting faces with the work um, and making a difference in people's lives. And not that other, not that other counties don't, not that other agencies don't, but, you know, we've really, in, in programs like this, in programs like uh, when Michael Daniels comes up here in a few minutes and talks about his agency, 
uh, and what they're doing in, in agency after agency in county government in Franklin County. Um, we are making a difference in the lives of real people every day. And the work that Christopher and Walter have begun and the work that now they're going to continue and expand is the kind of stuff that, that really, really matters in people's lives. And it's not just us pushing papers. And it's, it really matters. And it's great stuff. It's really great stuff. Good job, guys. Okay. If uh, there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 612-20. Kevin, that, that, that's really kind of creepy when I got to see two of you. I was just looking at that. That's just, <laughs> thank you. I like your living room better. I'm trying to find a virtual background. I can't get it right. So it's just well, that. You keep you know, putting them up and we'll keep telling, we'll give you a thumbs up and thumbs down. That last yeah, one. Yeah, I do. It's, it's not working for me. Voices I, the same I need somebody to like guide me through the virtual background thing. But okay. All right. If I, um, I think Commissioner O'Grady would happily send you a picture of Cleveland Brown Stadium if you'd like, Commissioner. I can do that. If, um, I'm sorry, Eric. I couldn't hear you. you. For whatever reason, you went out as soon as you started talking. Yeah, that it did not register there. Paper, so. paper. <laughs> That's uh, a picture if, of yourself. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 612-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 612-20 has been adopted. Great stuff, Director Walter to, and, and Christopher, who's not on today. Great. Thank you. Again, yeah, just thank you for the support. Stuff. So, justice policy and programs, Michael. Resolution number 613-20. Resolution authorizing a contract with the Sanctuary Collective for the provision of peer support and community-based training and drop-in services in the amount of $40,000. Good morning, commissioners. Michael Daniels, Director of Justice Policy and Programs. Um, commissioners, as you're aware, um, human sex trafficking and survival sex work continues to be an ongoing <laughs> concern <clears throat> for uh, us in the justice world. Um, and more than 50% of the arrests for uh, those activities occur on the Sullivan Avenue corridor. So we're partnering with the Sanctuary Collective, which is an organization that was founded by Hannah Esterbrook. She was part of the initial team who created Catch Court, um, and she will be actually leaving the Catch Court to go over and full time dedicate <clears throat> herself to the work at the Sanctuary Collective. They're opening a 24 seven drop in center for women, both cis and trans who are involved in this work on the West side, um, providing um, addiction support, um, basic medical care, connections to other care, et cetera. Um, when the 24-7 center is open, there will be a 24-7 presence from uh, Columbus Public Health that will be there doing a variety of different connections to care for physical, mental addiction, sexual health care, et cetera. The center will be run almost exclusively by peers, by women who themselves were working on the streets of Sullivan Avenue um, and who managed to uh, get out of the lifestyle and now want to go back and help people who were there. However, you can imagine, commissioners, that having been uh, being in a position where you are asked to go back out onto the very same streets where you yourself had been trafficked and traumatized comes with its own set of considerations above and beyond the normal things that a peer support specialist needs to understand. And so we're partnering with Hannah and her team at the Sanctuary Collective to create a trauma-informed um, and very specific peer support curriculum um, specifically so we can train folks who have been in a particular lifestyle um, how to go back in and help folks who are still there. How do you go back in and pull people out without you yourself falling back in? Um, and the self trauma understanding that's necessary and so forth. We feel that this is an incredibly important piece to the success of any program uh, that works with women in this particular area and can be transferred to other peer support arenas uh, where we're asking people to go back in and re-expose themselves to um, addiction or abuse or other trauma that they might have experienced. So we're helping uh, to form this curriculum. And as part of the contract, we'll be able to use that curriculum for additional programs moving forward. Um, pending any questions, Commissioner, we'd ask for your approval of this contract. 
Michael, Sandy. when you were on at briefing last week and talked about this program, afterward I had gotten several people who heard you at the briefing talking about Hannah and her story, and they reached out to me because they've heard her speak before at some community event and were so supportive of what she's doing and what we're proposing to do here. So I just wanted to let you know that um, they felt her support and what she's doing is incredibly helpful. <laughs> And these were people who had been sex trafficked and, and were really um, looking for help when nobody else would. And Hannah stepped in and were, was helpful to them. And I, so I just wanted you to be aware that people were listening on, on the briefing call. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and Hannah is, um, you, it doesn't get any better than Hannah Estabrook when it comes to the, the, the real dedication to serving this particular group of residents. Um, and we're just humbled to be able to partner with someone of her caliber uh, <coughs> to be able to bring forward a program like this. And um, as is our usual, uh, we're unaware of any other programming from any of our colleagues who have uh, gone to, to create this type of particular curriculum. So we'll be happy to talk about it if NACO ever convenes again um, and be able to share this. Commissioner O'Grady with our peers to remind them that uh, um, we're going to give them really good ideas that they can take and run with after, after, we, uh, uh, after we invent them. Well, I don't want <clears> to <throat> guess as to when NACO is going to convene again, but uh... I know they're talking about the ledge conference in, in March, February, but I, I, uh, I'm not guessing that that's going to happen. So maybe next summer, who knows? Well, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 613-12-20. I'll second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 613 20 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, thank you, Michael. We are on to public facilities management. Well, Resolution, Resolution number 614 20. Resolution authorizing a guaranteed maximum price or a GMP amendment number one to modify the original contract agreement with Alfred Incorporated to provide construction manager at risk services, including instruct construction services associated with the construction of the Franklin County Domestic Relations and Juvenile Court in the amount of $4,939,701. I'll good morning, commissioners. Darla Reardon, Director of Public Facilities Management. Also joining me today is CEO Vivian Alexander and representatives from Elford Inc. This resolution modifies the original contract agreement with Elford Inc. to authorize a guaranteed maximum price, a GMP, amendment number one, to provide construction services associated <laughs> with the Franklin County Domestic Relations and Juvenile Court Renovation Project. The project is necessary to support the addition of a second new judge in January of 2021. Execution of this GMP amendment is the next step in the construction manager at risk project delivery model that is being employed on this project. Elford will hold all the subcontracts associated with this amendment. This construction project is planned to be advanced through this single GMP amendment. Specifically, GMP amendment number one includes the following construction work, demolition, custom mill work and architectural woodwork, general trades, aluminum, glass and glazing, drywall and acoustical, flooring, painting and wall covering, fire suppression, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical work. The SEBE utilization plan for this GMP includes an SEBE participation of 45.7%, approximately 2.26 million from two local firms. Construction is expected to start this month. 
Jim Smith, CEO, and Randy Duncan, Vice President for Elford Inc., will now provide additional brief comment on the project and this amendment. Then pending any questions, we respectfully request your approval of guaranteed maximum price amendment number one. Thank you. Good morning, Joe. <clears throat> Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's great to be here again uh, in front of you. Uh, certainly appreciate this opportunity. Um, a couple key uh, uh, stats from this uh, this project. We had great bidding results. Um, we had 37 separate bids. Uh, about 24% of the bids were from SEB firms. So we had good SEB bidder turnout as well as, as award turnout. Um, so that was a very, uh, a, a big positive. Um, also similar with, with uh, local firms, we had seven of the 12 packages will be awarded to Franklin County firms and uh, three additional will be uh, central Ohio firms. So um, that, that's the vast majority of, of the contracts So very little um, not local participation, which is great. And we anticipate the creation of about 105 jobs uh, from the construction side of the project. Great. And Jim, I don't know if you'd like to, to say any brief comments. Well, I'll, I'll add that. Uh, thanks, Randy. And commissioners and Darla, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, we will uh, we'll take care of your property and people and visitors and staff and, and give you the product that uh, this community so well deserves. So. We appreciate the opportunity to serve you once again. As Thank you do. And uh, we've had some occasion to work with Alfred in the past and had good experience. And we appreciate the work that you've done for us in the past. So this should go as well as the Forensic Science Center has gone and we had great success with that project as well. Um, thank you very much for the work that you do. I'll just add, uh, I, I agree with um, Commissioner Brown about uh, Elford. Thanks for um, uh, being part of the project. Um, excited about what it means. It really is um, indicative of the growth of Franklin County and Central Ohio, unfortunately, in an area that uh, is an area that we want to reduce numbers in. But nonetheless, a lot of that is just based on volume of people. But but really, my question is, Darla, are going to be directed towards you, Director. And that's, so this is the cost for the one courtroom edition. So uh, one courtroom is $5 million. Uh, and, uh, and I know Don uh, Wheat from Pizzuti uh, is on here as well and perhaps would like to, to jump and assist uh, and Deputy uh, County Administrator Chris Long. But um, it is uh, courtroom uh, support spaces. And uh, so it's it's more than just a, a single courtroom. We can certainly provide you a breakdown uh, if you like. Uh, um, but certainly, you know, the uh, addition of a second new judge precipitated this, but movement, um, you know, that needs to happen uh, between floors and, and support, associated support spaces. Sure. I, I, I would like to get briefed on the detail there, if you don't mind. And then and further, um, it would, you know, we had discussed at some point um, moving the FSU unit, the family stabilization unit, um, over into the juvenile court. Is there is there the possibility still of of space for um, the FSU unit to be over there, possibly? Uh, I think that's a piece uh, that we were, oh, looks like uh, Chris would like to jump in as well, um, but I know there would be uh, some discussion about that. Chris, did you want to jump in? Yes, uh, commissioners, um, in terms of the family stabilization unit, um, uh, we are working as hard as we can, especially with the addition of additional staff to make sure that we can keep those staff within <coughs> the downtown complex and not have to set um, offsite even to walk a block away. Um, space is very tight for the domestic and juvenile court their own staff within the floors three through six. But uh, I just had a conversation with Director Bivens last Friday of looking at ways that we can maximize the space within our own tower. If it can't be within the three to six uh, spaces that domestic and juvenile court have, we want it to be as accessible as possible so families do not have to walk far at all and can stay within the footprint. So it's a work in progress, Commissioner, um, working with the, the courts themselves to make sure that we have can maximize that space. 
Uh, and to the, the earlier comment as well, and Darla touched on this, um, it is, um, the effort is to make sure that we can maintain domestic and juvenile court in the downtown facilities. And so it, it, re it required moving uh, most of their administrative staff off of the sixth floor so that we can make room for that additional judge. So all the judges can be on the same floor. So it has a lot of domino effect, which is uh, where you're seeing the cost to ensure that we can have that footprint that makes sense for the domestic and juvenile court within the downtown complex. But that's why yeah. the domino effect you see with, with that. But we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we get all yeah. that additional information to each of you uh, uh, as commissioners so you can see all the different components that have gone into that process. Thank you, Deputy Administrator. I, that, that's really important because it's important that the public know that I, I, I had a sense of that, but it's important that the public know we're not paying five million dollars for one courtroom. That Absolutely. You know, that there, there are multiple elements of this that um, in order to accommodate. Uh, and, and so that just I think that should be this should have been a little more clear. But the, uh, with regards to the stabilization unit, um, family stabilization unit, um, <clears throat> part of the critical nature of their work is access to the families and being there to be able to perhaps solve issues that families might have as they're interacting in the system and versus the lengthy process of being in the system in the full circular nature that it creates. Um, and so I don't think the entire FSU unit has to be over there as opposed to the caseworkers need to be there, you know, because the caseworkers can capture families and individuals as they're interacting with the system. And so I, I don't want to get too deep on, on this part, but I, but, I, but I would challenge and push you all to find a way it, while we're building to accommodate this um, logistical issue of capturing you know the family need right as it's happening and that's where the case managers come in they can they can have their system in another place that support and all that but 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 they need to be there as you know it's playing out in court as it's playing out you know behind the scenes i mean it just, there's value in just that basic because what happens is the family will be there and then they get sent across the street or they get sent or, or they've got to catch up now with the family and if they don't have a cell phone or if they don't have the address isn't you know you know is it right it just prolongs their time and perhaps our ability to support these families as they enter the system so that logistical piece is critical i wish director bivens was still on the on the line i was looking i don't think she is but um uh, because I mean, it, it's just that that little piece that becomes the a, a very critical part. Uh, that being said, this this looks like um, this is an area of the county I feel <clears throat> always good about when we're doing construction projects. You know, we've got a lot of really exciting things that are happening, and um, and all of our partners uh, seemingly do very well. So I definitely support this um, this resolution, this expenditure. But I so, want to I, I want to get briefed on the details of that a little more. Yeah. So let me clarify something so not the the family stabilization unit uh, piece notwithstanding that i'm sure that the location of that will be um important and will be worked out as we as we go along um <clears throat> so this is the second new courtroom in the last couple of years and the while the cost of the actual courtroom is is one thing the um the ancillary uh accompanying staff and staff needs and court um court administrative needs that go along with the addition of two 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 new courtrooms are are part of the cost here correct I, mean, I guess i'm asking this question to both chris and darla um so <clears throat> that's part of the five million dollars here the an, ac an actual courtroom cost is not five million dollars it's it's all of the additional administrative and ancillary needs that go along with the addition of two judges correct that's correct. Additional magistrate uh, uh, yes. uh, areas, the movement amongst the different floors. And we're also taking advantage of the time when our construction team will be on the floors to do some general building upgrades and maintenance that need to happen uh, while we're in, uh, along uh, that process. So yes. trying to be as smart about it as we can while we're in that footprint. Yes, because as I recall from uh, the, the, pre, the first courtroom that we, that we built, the, the, the price tag wasn't this large the this is the expanded cost on this one is because of the additional mm -hmm. that space needs that are created with the addition of both of these judges and, and the needs for right. both of these judges right and the court as a whole correct yeah just wanted correct. to be clear 
Okay. We need a motion. I had, uh, muted, I had muted my stuff. Uh, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 614-20. Second. Move to second voting. Commissioner Boyes? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 614-20 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Darla. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll take care of you. You always do. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. All right, to the purchasing department. Resolution number... Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Resolution number 615-20. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $2,206,149.94. Good morning, Commissioner. Sharon Sabri, fiscal, so fiscal Support Analyst for the Franklin County Purchasing Department, presenting for Director Megan Perry Balanier. Um, this resolution requests your approval of 112 purchase orders. The county Auditor has pre certified available funding. This week, 22 out of 33 eligible POs are being presented for award to small and emerging business. Enterprise vendors, these 22 POs total $200,110.50. This equates to 67% of the eligible PO value and 47% of the eligible PO dollar value. These 22 POs are being presented for award to qualified business enterprises in the following categories. Two to small emerging businesses enterprises, 14 women business enterprises, four minority business enterprises, one disadvantaged business enterprise, one local economically disadvantaged enterprise. Pending um, any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 615-20. Second. Move to second voting, Commissioner Boyes. Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 615-20 has been adopted. Thank you. The Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Sharon. The Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 616-20. Resolution authorizing appropriation adjustments related to the distribution of CARES Act and other federal funding to respond to the public health emergency with respect to COVID-19. Good morning, Commissioners. Zach Telerik with the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, this resolution would authorize supplemental appropriations, <clears throat> excuse me, in the amount of $5,137,910 for eight agencies to backfill appropriations that have been used to respond to COVID-19. Uh, this includes enhanced cleaning and the purchase of supplies by public facilities management, increased operating costs at the coroner's office, emergency food support provided by the Veterans Service Commission, uh, COVID-19 response grants that have been awarded by Economic Development and Planning, Community Partnerships, and the Office on Aging, and reimbursement to Adam H. for support of their network providers. Uh, pending any questions, would ask for your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 616-20. Second. Move to second voting. Commissioner Boyes? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 616-20 has been adopted. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do we have any uh, journalizations this morning, Victoria? Um, yes, we do. We have two. Okay. Case, case Annex, annex 21-20. An expedited type two annexation petition, Annex 21-20, was filed with the Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department on September the 2nd, 2020. The petition is requesting to annex 0 0.9 plus or minus acres from Mifflin Township to the City of Columbus. The petition will be considered by the Board of Commissioners on October the 6th, 2020. Site 2622 through 2624, Johnstown Road, PDI number 
Case Annex 22-20, an expedited Type 2 annexation petition, Annex 22-20, was filed with the Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department on September the 2nd, 2020. The petition is requesting to annex 5.397 plus or minus acres from Prairie Township to the City of Columbus. The petition will be considered by the Board of Commissioners on October the 6th, 2020. Site 5757 West Broad Street, PDI number 240-001893, Galloway Road, PDI number 240-005158. Thank you. Um, uh, Mark, do you have anything uh, for us? Uh, no questions this morning. Thank you. All right. Is there any other media on the call? All right. I guess that concludes our meeting for today. Uh, have a great day, everyone. I guess we have a um, zoning rezoning uh, meeting now. Uh, is economic development planning ready or will they be soon?